You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's time. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday. My goodness. Fifth day of July, 2017. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the extended long vacation. Four days in a row. That doesn't happen too often. I guess except when a major holiday like the 4th of July falls on Tuesday. If it's Wednesday, then everybody kind of wants to work Monday, Tuesday. But when it falls on a Tuesday, I guess everybody just threw up their hands and said, Eh, what's the point? So, but a lot happened. I hope a lot happened with you. I hope you got some rest and relaxation and you're ready to to go at it and have a great short week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll be here each and every day. And, uh, yeah, I kind of missed you, you know. I did sort of unplug and actually get a little rest and a little relaxation, so... That brings us to today, Wednesday, 
Now, normally Wayne Jett is with us on Wednesdays, but he has a company, as they call it, visitors. And so he won't be with us today. He'll be back with us again next Wednesday. And so we look forward to that. Now, it has been a holiday. The markets were open half day Monday. But, you know, what we're going to do here in a little bit is we're going to bring up a blank chart. We're going to go through each of the different markets that we normally look at. And we're going to kind of get a big picture view of everything that happened since we last spoke last Friday. If you cannot see the charts I have up, your best bet is to go to the home page at cfrn.net. On the right hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. Where it says watch live now, click that. 30 seconds, you'll see the charts, you'll have access to the chat box. Now that chat box is important because that is your opportunity to participate in and be a part of this radio program. It is for you and by you. So chime in. We have a global audience, so if you got something you want to share with the world, get off your chest, a rant, a rave, a thought, an idea, this is your platform. And um, we're happy to share your thoughts with whoever is listening today, right now, or after the fact, once we get the show uploaded. Let's start out by taking a quick look at the numbers from around the world. These are the cash markets. We'll start here at home in the US of A. Also, you can watch us and hear us at youtube.com slash CFRN. And then in the upper left, you will see uh, a little video screen and it says live. Click that. And that's all you got to do. In fact, I'm getting mine open right now because there's a chat box over there. I used to think I couldn't manage two chat boxes at once, but I figured it out. So that's just got to mute that. Okay, now we're ready to roll. All right, here at home in the U.S. of A, the Dow is currently down 24 points. NASDAQ is up 26. S&P 500 is at the flat line. Russell 2000 is down almost 12. In the commodity basket, crude oil down a dollar 79 trading 4528 last gold up three dollars and sixty cents trading 12 22 80 last in the asian markets the nikkei closed up 49 points on the session the shanghai closed up 24 points on the session now that's kind of a big deal for the Shanghai. That's three quarters of 1%. And the Hang Seng closed up 133 points. And that's a big deal because that's half, a little over half of 1%. Last but not least, color of the day in Europe, green. The FTSE closed up 10 points. The DAX, 16 and a half points. And the CAC, a little over five points. No movers, no shakers. And in the U.S., uh, definitely no movers or shakers there. Pretty quiet post-holiday trade. Something we've come to expect simply from historical observance. Uh, tomorrow, things could get a little wild. Okay, we have Fed Minutes coming out today at 2 p.m. Eastern. 
Now, Fed minutes are not as big a deal as the Fed announcement, but they can create some volatility in the market. So let me just suggest that about 10 minutes to two, uh, if you're in a day trade type position, important thing about today is we started short positive time, short -term, or a short term type of trade, uh, you probably want to go flat. May or may not be a lot of volatility. You, you just never know. Uh, it used to be on Fed Day and Fed Minutes Day. It was, uh, well, if, you've ne if you never saw it, it, it's hard to even explain. But it was a pretty wild ride. Since we've had interest rates at historic lows for so many years now, with no bullets in the interest rate gun, not a lot of excitement on Fed Day, but we still get a bump, you know, big or small. Speaking of bumps, uh, Kim Jong-un is fist bumping some guy in this picture that I'm looking at. Uh, grinning broadly, he delighted in the global furor created by his nation's first launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile vowing today to never abandon nuclear weapons and to keep sending Washington more gift packages of missile and atomic tests. U.S. and South Korean forces, in response to yesterday's launch, engineered a show of force for Pyongyang with troops from the Allies firing deep strike precision missiles into South Korean territorial waters. South Korean President Moon Jae-in ordered the drills arranged with the U.S. to show North Korea our firm combined missile response posture. A North Korean test of an ICBM confirmed later by U.S. and South Korean officials is a momentous step forward for Pyongyang as it works to build an arsenal of long-range nuclear-armed missiles that can hit anywhere in the U.S. The North isn't there yet. Some analysts suggest it will take several more years to perfect such an arsenal and many more tests, but a successful launch of an ICBM has long been seen as a red line, after which it would only be a matter of time if the country isn't stopped. Worry spread in Washington and at the United Nations, where the U.S., Japan, and South Korea requested a U.N. Security Council emergency session which will be held uh, sometime later today. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the U.S. response would include stronger measures to hold the DPRK accountable, using an acronym for the nation's formal name, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Uh, what an oxymoron that is, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The uproar only seemed to inspire the North, whose propaganda machine rarely fails to aggrandize its leader and its military or to thumb its nose at its rivals, Seoul and Washington. A report in its state media today described Leader Kim as feasting his eyes on the ICBM, which North Korea said was capable of carrying a large nuclear warhead before its launch. With a broad smile on his face, Kim urged his scientists to frequently send big and small gift packages to the Yankees, an apparent reference to continuing the stream of nuclear and missile tests that Kim has ordered since taking power in late 2011. Pretty sure when he said Yankees, he was referring to uh, our country and not the baseball team. The North was also pleased that its test came as Americans celebrated Independence Day. What timing. Kim, the state media report said, told scientists and technicians that the U.S. would be displeased to witness the strategic option as it was given a package of gifts incurring its disfavor on its Independence Day. The North has a history of conducting weapons tests on or around July 4th. 
Kim reportedly stressed that the protracted showdown with the U.S. imperialists has reached its final phase and it is now time for the DPRK to demonstrate its mettle to the U.S., which is testing its will in defiance of its warning. The test, North Korea's most successful yet, is a direct rebuke to President Trump's earlier declaration that such a test won't happen. So what's the president going to do now? What's Congress going to allow him to do? What can he do without Congress's approval? Soon after the launch, Trump responded on Twitter, North Korea has just launched another missile. Does this guy have anything better to do with his life? Hard to believe that South Korea and Japan will put up with this much longer. Perhaps China will put a heavy move on North Korea and end this nonsense once and for all. After North Korea claimed earlier this year it was close to an ICBM test, Trump took to Twitter and said it won't happen. Well, now it has. Last year, North Korea conducted its fourth and fifth atomic bomb tests and claimed a series of technical breakthroughs in its efforts to develop long-range nuclear missiles. The fifth nuclear test in September was the North's most powerful atomic detonation to date. The Korean Peninsula has been divided since the end of World War II. Almost 30,000 U.S. troops are stationed in South Korea. I've been there, Shinhe Pusan, uh, nice country, nice people. Uh, large money, the bills, the, the, the banknotes, whatever you want to call them, uh, were comically large, cartoonish almost. When you, if you took $100 out on Liberty, I mean, you put it in your in your pockets and in your socks and in your jacket and it was a lot. Let me just say that. Not that money necessarily went that far. Most guys saved up their money to buy leather jackets. That was the big thing in Korea. Leather. Australia it was uh, tattoos. Something about the ink there. Best tattoos in the world. Uh, in Hong Kong you got a suit, a tailor-made suit, uh, inexpensive, well done, and there's a couple other countries I won't, I won't talk about what went on there, because this is family radio, right? All right, let's do this. Let's go to Michael real quick and get a recap of everything that happened today in the live training room. If you weren't there, you should have been there, and you can be there tomorrow and Michael will tell you exactly how to go about doing that. If you're ready, Michael? Yes, I am ready. I will Okey do doke. That. Here we go. And I got your charts and I'll hit mute and I will be here when you're done. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the fifth day of July 2017. Now, if you have not taken our free trial, then you need to go to the home page here at CFRN.net and look right up here at the top. You see that little banner just bounces in there and it says, use our indicators, learn our strategy. Um, click here. It also says sign up for the CFRN live training. 100% free trial. It is 100% free. Um, and then it says click here. Once you click there, you got to put in right here, just put in your first name and your email address. Click on register now and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click the confirmation link, okay? Once you do that, we know you've signed up for the trial and we'll send you all the information you need to get into the live training room. Um, <clears throat> now, today, this is our spreadsheet of our daily results. It goes back over four and a half years now. Um, and if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Um, today, on the 5th of July, we made four ticks on soybeans. We lost six ticks on the euro, nine ticks on crude, and five ticks on gold. 
That puts us at 152.50. 152.50. All right. Today it took 10 minutes and two trade opportunities to get to our goal for the day. At that point, we're up $180 contract, and we took a total of 10 trade opportunities today. All right. So on the month now, it's the first day of the month. We're at 152.50. And on the year now, we're at 19000 $87.50. That's over 123 trading days, averaging $155 per day. Now that's one contract, two hours per day. Okay. All right. Now, let's get into what, what went on this morning. Um, right here in gold, our first opportunity here in gold, we made 11 ticks right there. That was where we got our goal for the day. Um, then we stopped that on the follow, put us back down to plus three. We missed this one right here. Okay, we missed that one. And right over here, we got two ticks profit, put us at plus five. We missed that one. And during the break, there was a bounce off the BBC right here. That's still going right now. Okay, what you would look for, if this bar closes up and breaks this level right here, then it should get up to this level right here. 23.7 okay all right on the euro um, right here on the euro we had two ticks profit right there we missed this one which probably would have been a break even we got two ticks profit right there and then we stopped out right there to put us at uh, minus six on the day right now the euro is setting up a shorting opportunity we need a down close off the BBC right there okay um, crude Wow, look at that. Look at that big move down this morning. Um, <clears throat> right here was our first opportunity on crude. We got seven ticks profit on this one. Um, <clears throat> and this again is where we got the goal for the day. This one right here. Uh, I, I'm missing something in here. Yeah, I didn't mark this one. Um, on this one, I think we got one or two ticks profit, but I don't know. But I didn't mark it anyway. But it was a shorting opportunity. Um, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, I'll have to fix that later. It was a shorting opportunity. And ticks. Um, <clears throat> it looks like we got a little bit of something there. Um, but um, I'm not going to count that. I will count the actual trade though. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And we missed that one. Then here, you see how the cycle was going back and forth down here while price was continued moving down. Um, then we stopped out on this, put us at minus one. We had a break even there, and then we got a plus 10 here to put us at plus nine. Uh, during the break, there was a shorting opportunity right here, but I would not have done that because I would have said we're not trending. Um, and same thing with the long off the BBC right here. I would not do that because I would say we're not trending. On the soybeans, we had one opportunity right here that we took. It was plus four. And the soybeans made a huge move down. Then they started to come back up, and I needed to adjust this. Like that. And then even further. Like that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there's a bounce off the BBC right here, and that was that on the soybeans. On the YM, there was quite a bit of movement today on the YM, um, but we weren't really watching it. Okay, you see how the cycle was just flipping around in there? So I had pointed out two opportunities here on the YM, there and there. <laughs> That was it. During the break, everything flattened out. Okay, on the ES, I pointed out one opportunity here. I think, yes, actually two. That one and that one. But you see how the ES went from this zone down to this zone, and stopped, turned around, and is going back up to the zone where it started from. Um, anyway, let's get back to the spreadsheet. Now i got to change one number here on the spreadsheet. That one. Okay, so 
if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you could read all the CFTC risk disclosure stuff down at the bottom. Let me bring this up. Good afternoon, Pete. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're plus four on beans, minus six on the euro, plus nine on crude, plus five on gold, 152.50 total. Uh, it took 10 minutes, two opportunities to get to 180, and we took a total of 11 this morning. So on the month now, 152.50, of course, just one day. On the year now, 19,087. That's over 123 days, averaging 155 per day. Okay. Um, if you have not taken our free trial, go to the homepage here at CFRN.net. And right up here at the very top where it says click here, click there, then put in your name, put in your email, click on register now. Once you do that, you'll be sent to confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, you must click that confirmation link. Um, Mm, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, guys, at 8.15, you have the ADP non-farm employment change coming out. That's a big deal. That's a high-impact report, and it really does move the market. So you want to be careful around 8.15 tomorrow morning. Okay. We have other high-impact reports coming out. The unemployment claims comes out. Um, trade balance, uh, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. Those are all big deals. Crude inventories, also a big deal. I don't know why they don't have it listed here, but the natural gas comes out at 1030 and they don't have it listed here for some reason. I don't know why they don't have it listed. They didn't push it to Friday, did they? Yeah, they did push it to Friday. Okay, they pushed the natural gas to Friday. I guess they didn't. I don't know, there's a lot of a lot of high impact stuff coming coming out here on Friday too. All right. Well anyway, just change, a little bit of a change. This week, uh, crude inventory is coming out at 11 tomorrow instead of 10.30 today. And we have 8.15 ADP non-farm employment change. Those are big deals. Okay. All right. And that's it. With that, we can send it back out to Studio A. Fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Where we're looking the nation's largest outdoor city park. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I, I had it outdoor. <laughs> Oof. I don't know what's going on? I keep sneezing today. Do we have any indoor city parks? I don't know. I don't know. That, that's a good question. <laughs> So, if I heard you correctly, price went from the zone down to the zone, back up to the zone, almost? That is correct. Almost. Okay. Because Michael had this week's zones up, I've got last week's zones up, and as you can see, here we are all the way over to Wednesday, and last week's zone has been keeping the market in check since... Uh, well, pretty much since the Globex opened last night. Zone to zone, zone to zone to zone to zone. Not a big zone, only, it was only four points wide, so. Yeah. Anyway. All right, and so the recap of the recap was. Uh, is 10 minutes, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. two trades, $180. Ten minutes, two trades, hundred eighty dollars. That's a great way to start the week, even if the start of the it week's is. a Wednesday. It is, and and the month. It's also the start of the month. Now we do the same thing every day, guys. So if you've never taken the trial, I'm sure Michael just told you how to take the trial. I did. Yep, it's a piece of cake. You can even just type into your browser apply. dot cfrn. dot net. You can just do that. Fill in the form. You'll get an automated email right away. And then shortly thereafter, we will manually send you an email with a lot of information. So you need to read the whole thing, follow the instructions, go to the page it directs you to. And you got some legwork to do before you come in tomorrow morning. Now, if you get hung up on anything, if it has to do with uh, 
let's say you're going to take a demo of the DT Pro platform so that you'll be able to run our indicators. If you need help, you can call 866 928 3310. If you already have Ninja or choose to take the Ninja demo, then you would call the appropriate number for that. But the second email you get will direct you to a page that gives you all the information that you need to get a demo up and running so that you'll have our indicators up and running so that you can watch Michael, you can trade along with him in sim and the more you utilize what we're showing you in the live training room for the week that you're there the closer you'll come to understanding the simplicity and you'll be able to ask better questions higher quality questions and we'll do our very best to give you high quality answers all right okay michael um did you do anything exciting for the fourth of july no uh, we just went over to a friend's and they had a pool party and stuff and hung out and played outside but we didn't really do anything exciting no didn't city even... fireworks or anything nope there were fireworks but um but not us we didn't have them. there were fireworks all around us and yeah so we got to watch them but they were all private so you never know when they're gonna go off. we went to the maryville spring training camp for i think it's the milwaukee brewers i don't know but it's a nice venue, and the fireworks were nice. They were short-lived, but uh, it took us longer to get out of the parking lot, I think, than the fireworks lasted. But uh, yeah, it was yeah, so hot and so humid. Man, it was 8.30, 8.45 at night. I felt like I was going to have a heat stroke out there. It was unbelievable. Not a cool yeah. breeze in sight. Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty warm here as well mm. and and we by 8 30 i think well we had just left i think right around 8 30 and come on and and the fireworks that we saw it was i mean it was still kind of kind of light out it wasn't really dark you know, of course it doesn't get that dark here till later on but and we just wanted to come back home so I'm glad you had a good time. Glad you got some rest and relaxation. And yeah. I will chat with you later uh, today, probably. Okay. Sounds good, Dwayne. Okie doke. Uh, headlines, guys. Samsung's reportedly building an artificial intelligence powered speaker to take on the Amazon Echo and Google Home. The speaker is codenamed Vega. <laughs> Well, if they tell us the code name, I mean, how is that like a secret? I don't know. Anyway, Vega and it will come with Samsung's uh, artificial intelligence assistant who goes by the name of Bixby. That's right. <laughs> yep. We talked last week about Imagination Technologies, who has been an Apple supplier since the beginning of the iPhone. Uh, Imagination said there's been no progress in its dispute with Apple. The company said in its financial results that Apple's unsubstantiated assertions and the resultant dispute have forced us to change our course. Yeah, kind of like from doing really well, unfortunately, to probably going out of business. That's the danger of... I mean, who wouldn't want to have Apple as one of their clients? Every every person in business. I don't care who you are and what you sell. I mean, if you're the donut lady with the little roll around cart, I mean, work for Apple? Sure. But if that's your only customer, hmm, they just found a lady who has donuts and Danish and she undercut your prices. They'll show you the door just like they did uh, 
just like they did with imagination technologies. Facebook is fighting the U.S. government over a gag order that it says threatens freedom of speech. Facebook said it wants to tell three of its users about search warrants seeking their information. Hmm. Also, Facebook came out with a new thing, and I haven't found the thing, I don't know how to use the thing, but the thing they came out with supposedly allows you, when you're out and about, to find free Wi-Fi using Facebook. I'm sure those of you who are really big Facebook fans have already found it and maybe even used it. So if you have, let me know. Tell me how it worked. U.S. government reportedly wants to intervene in Apple's legal fight in Europe over state aid. The administration hasn't said anything publicly about the case. The U.S. government wants to intervene in Apple's legal fight in Europe. The... <laughs> Don't, don't we have enough uh, on our hands? The U.S. government has opened an appeal against an European Union order to pay back up to 13 billion euros in Irish taxes. A source familiar with the matter said Tuesday, iPhone maker Apple took its case to the Luxembourg-based General Court, Europe's second highest in December, after the European Commission issued the record tax demand saying the U.S. company won sweetheart tax deals from the Irish government, which amounted to illegal subsidies. The decision was criticized by the Obama administration, which said the European Union was helping itself to cash that should have ended up in the United States. I agree. The Trump administration, which has tentatively proposed a tax break on $2.6 trillion in corporate profits being held offshore as part of its tax reform has not said anything in public about the case. I can confirm the United States filed an application with the European Union General Court to intervene in the case involving the retroactive application of state aid rules to Apple. Okay, now I get it. Sam wants that money. <laughs> they don't want they don't want it taken by the European government. A Chinese court froze 182 million dollars in assets linked to the chairman of cash strapped Le Eco, not a company I'm familiar with. Frozen assets reportedly belong to Le Eco chairman Jia Yuting, his wife and several Le Eco affiliates. Hmm. Image hosting site Photobucket, you don't hear much about them anymore, has been accused of blackmail after forcing users to pay to hotlink to images. The change has been that some listings on sites like Amazon and eBay no longer display properly. Hmm. Changing the rules after the game begins. That's never good. Google uh, DeepMind's NHS deals were scrutinized in a new report, but tough questions remain unanswered. DeepMind's own panel said that there was a lack of clarity in the agreement it made with the Royal Free London NHS Foundation Trust. A tool to modify Grand Theft Auto V has been made available again after developer Rockstar Games backed away from legal action. Open 4 is back after players lobbied the game developer not to shut it down. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Grand Theft Auto, but if you see it in your kids' hands or your grandkids' hands or any kids' hands, just take it. It is bad news. A new... I can't even believe they they uh, 
I mean, everything that's wrong with our world today, they glamorize it in, 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 in this video game. A new video shows how a metal and glass iPhone 8 dummy unit compares to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. The video shows how the iPhone 8 could look with a vertical camera. A vertical camera. Hmm. Well, my camera's circular. Oh, I guess I see what they're talking about. A little metal thing around it would be verti vertical as opposed to its horizontal position right now. Okay. Ticketmaster is experimenting with a system that uses data over audio to admit people into shows. Data over audio to admit people into shows. It's part of the company's campaign against ticket touts. What are ticket touts? You probably know you wanted to go to a show. It might have been a rock show. It might have been a play on Broadway. Ticketmaster will soon be able to admit you to live events and track your movement using nothing more than a discreet digital audio broadcast from your smartphone. The ticketing giant has teamed up with Listener, a data over audio. Give me one second, folks. Okay. The ticketing giant teamed up with Listener, a data over audio company that uses an ultrasonic sound technology it calls Smart Tones to transmit information between devices. There are myriad use cases for listeners' technology. For example, it recently partnered with Jaguar Land Rover to enable vehicles to communicate with mobile devices, other cars, and potentially the broader environment where smart tone technology is enabled. This could be used to replace a key fob with a smartphone to unlock the door or to personalize seat settings, including placement and climate control. Founded out of Cincinnati, Ohio in 2012, Listener has raised north of 14 million since its inception, has some notable backers, which led its $10 million Series B round back in 2015. As one of the world's largest ticketing vendors and distributors, Ticketmaster is a major coup for Listener as it looks to scale its technology in the real world. In a nutshell, listeners' smart tones constitute audio signals in the 18.75 kHz band and 19.2 kHz range and are completely inaudible to more than 90% of the human population. As you approach the venue, you can take out your phone and it broadcasts your ticketing data, which is detected by a scanner at the venue, confirms your identity, and expedites the entry process. So I'm a little concerned for the 10% of the population that can hear those tones. Now, you may not have heard this before, but there are certain tones in a certain frequency range that can be heard by children who are I think it's 13 years old and younger. Over the age of 13, the ability to hear sounds in that spectrum or that range goes away. And so for a while it was used, uh, kids would have their phones ring in that range. I don't know why a kid 13 or younger would have a smartphone, but that's beside the point. So the phone could ring or a text message could come in, they would hear it and their parents would not. So there you have it. Um, John, is that you? Thought I heard a noise. Okay. That 
pretty much takes it for all the headlines. Well, not quite. One of the world's biggest Bitcoin exchanges has been hacked. And 30,000 customers' data has been compromised. BitThumb is based in South Korea, and the country's watchdog internet and security agency is investigating after some customers said they lost money in the attack. BitThumb did not immediately respond to Business Insider's request for comment, though it says users' passwords were not stolen. It's one of the busiest exchanges in the world. On Tuesday, Motherboard reported it was the fourth largest globally in terms of volumes of all cryptocurrencies traded daily, and by Wednesday it had jumped to first place. In a statement, BitThumb said via the cryptocurrency news site Brave New Coin that an employee computer was compromised rather than its core servers. The employee PC, not the head office server, was hacked. Personal information such as mobile phone and email addresses of some users were leaked. However, some customers were found to have been stolen from because of the disposable password used in electronic financial transactions. Brave New Coin reports billions of won has been stolen. For context, 1 billion won, that's the name of the currency in Korea, W-O-N, won, is about $870,000 as such it would be markedly smaller than some previous hacks of Bitcoin exchanges, such as Mt. Gox, where 460 million in Bitcoin disappeared back in 2014. Some BitThumb users were victims of voice phishing, where someone phoned them up saying they worked for BitThumb and scammed them out of funds. You know, Every it's it's like a daily event. Some major place gets hacked, or there's some kind of an attack. Uh, I guess this is the new normal, and and we got to figure out how to live with it. John, I thought I heard you come in uh, there for a moment, but I don't I don't hear you. So if they've patched you through. You will need to, I uh, guess, call back in. Not sure what happened there. Okay, let's go to our good word for the day. Rock your box. <laughs> Isaiah 40.29 says, He increases the power of the weak. A little boy was disabled and the doctors of the time said there was nothing they could do to help him. So his mother took an orange crate, put him in it, tied a rope around it, tied the rope to her waist, and pulled him around with her wherever she went. After a while, the boy developed a habit his mother didn't like. He began to rock his box. <laughs> Sometimes he rocked it to the point that it tipped over and he fell out. No matter how many times she put him back in, he kept doing the same thing. Eventually he rocked his box until he was finally able to get out of it. Then to everyone's amazement, he learned how to walk and ended up with a great life. True or not, I don't know. <laughs> oh, there's a million stories in the Naked City. but. This story has a has a point, poignant point. That little boy did something the doctors and not even his mother believed could happen. He refused to settle for life inside a box that someone else had put him in. Has someone put you in a box today? If so, keep rocking your box until you're free. Other people are self-appointed experts at telling us what we can and can't do. They don't always celebrate anything out of the box, which is something out of the ordinary. But one of the great promises in the Bible is, He increases the power of the weak. 
start reading Rock Your Box scriptures. Here's a couple. Micah 3.8 But as for me, I am filled with power with the Spirit of the Lord. Here's another from Matthew 19.26 With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Today, I encourage you to declare over your life, over your situation, over your health, over your finances, over your relationships. Lord, you promised it. I believe it. And that settles it. That's our good word for the day. Okay, we said we were going to take a look at some charts and kind of get up to speed on what's going on in the world. So, I'm just seeing a message now that John was here, but I couldn't hear him. Let me let him know real quick. He'll pop back in here in a second. All right, let's grab a chart that we can use. This will work. Let's move it to one hour. Let's just start with the ES. Okay. This was last Thursday, the day of the big sell-off. And last week, our lowest weekly trading zone was 2400 slash 2401. So the swing low was 2402 and a quarter. Okay. And then the high was put in on July 3rd at 10 a.m. And today is now the 5th. So this is the S&P basically for the last week. Yeah, we'll do that. And going all the way back to this is most of last week. We had a high at 24.47. Our zone was up at 50.51. So we had a leg and a retrace, and we had a big leg down. So that's our. So if you take a look at this last leg, we overshot the 62. And we've been battling back and forth between the 62 and the 50. Hey, is that you, John? Mm-hmm. Oh, welcome to the show. Sorry, I was coming on about 10 minutes ago. And Ran into a bit of a trouble. Uh, something went wrong with the phone. Oh, okay. So we're we're good now. Yeah, I, I thought I heard you, um, and then I then all of a sudden you were gone. So okay. Yeah. So how was your holiday? Okay, no. Well, well, uh, unfortunately, I uh, got a, some kind of a problem with a tooth. Uh, 
uh, you know, one of these abscesses. Uh oh. They just drove me insane. Man, those Possibly, things are bad. Yeah, splitting headache on the left side of my head, and uh, had to go to the dentist and get some emergency treatment. So it was a bit miserable <laughs> from that standpoint. Mm. But I'm better, better today, or recovering today, you put it that way. Okay. <clears throat> um, but it was a good, uh, good holiday. The weather was fantastic. A friend of mine sent me uh, a picture of their daughter, uh, who's an Olympic hopeful, skiing somewhere in uh, California. So, uh, you know, I think this, uh, a lot of, uh, probably don't know this, but, there's, you know, because the winter was so cold over in Europe this last year, and it was pretty cold in the U.S. too, and in uh, where this uh, friend of mine lives up in Reno, they got about eight feet of snow, Cumulatively, um, over, uh, so over the whole season, um, you know, I, I, and the way they measure it mm-hmm. was uh, some tremendous number, uh, or maybe it was 28 feet. I don't know. It was some, some huge number. Uh, sounds more like it. Um, anyhow, uh, the, there is growing evidence. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll prepare this for maybe for tomorrow's uh, uh, show. But, uh, so you can show it to people, but there's this graph of the sun's activity, which, uh, just like a bull market, you know, the the, the, the interest and the intensity c- tends to peak of the market. We the sun's thousand, right around the time that Al Gore came out of the woodwork with the whole climate uh, thing, global warming thing. And then the second degree peak. Then it went down into the, in 2008-9, um, kind of a lot like the market in a way. And then it uh, peaked in 2014, uh, or just as the Paris Agreement was being signed. So these sort of frenzies tend to occur when, when, uh, and right now, even though we've had some hot weather and some records broken this year, uh, that's not unusual because you tend to get a hot spell before the before the next ice age, but the evidence is growing that uh, the next four years we could enter a mini ice age, and it could last for about 15 or 30 years. It could be a very big deal. And uh, the the you know there was this period during the 16th, 17th century called the Maunder Minimum, when temperatures dropped drastically, and this is when the Thames froze over in London. But the Brits, there's, there's, there's a lot of, I can send you a whole bunch of uh, links on this. Uh, it's really fascinating because, the, you know, when the early winter came in Europe last year, this was when all this global warming, or sorry, the, all the freezing stuff, the ice age came out, you know, started being reported. And uh, there's some pretty good scientific background behind it. But And all this stuff about global warming, it's a lot of nonsense because... The, there's more toxic effluent coming out of volcanoes year over year, and certainly over billions of years, than humans will ever produce. I mean, I, I think that, you know, toxic the, the toxic fumes that uh, are from humanity probably peaked back in the 50s or 60s, and 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 is actually coming down, uh, you know, all the time right now. You know, it's coming lower and lower, and I can. I, I'm telling you, when I look at my, when I'm up on my roof, a few years ago, there used to be kind of a yellow uh, horizon, you know, there was a sort of yellow smog type uh, thing you could always see. I, this isn't there anymore. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, you know, I think the air around the world is, is starting to get cleaner. And the world has a way of dealing with it, you know, I mean, the Earth's been around for billions of years and and we're all here today and we're and and it has a way of cleaning the sea from all the garbage that gets dumped into it and and it gets and it cleans the air you know through rain and washing washing the air through rainfall and taking all the toxins out of the air um now unfortunately sometimes those toxins go into the ground uh, but uh, you know the, the the ground has a way of dealing with that as well so i i think uh you know, I'm just thinking about old tr- Trump is uh, going to have to face some some heat when he goes to Europe. But I think all these people are on the wrong wrong page, and and uh, as we've seen with a lot of Trump's tweets, sooner or later they come true. 
and uh, I think he's on very solid ground regarding this Paris deal. I mean, it, it, can you imagine if, you know, the, it's supposed to start, well, the U.S. was supposed to start paying in 2025 and the rest of the world in 2030, which is one of the reasons why Trump canceled the deal. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> because it seemed to be very lopsided against the U.S., and the U.S. is sort of taking the lead and paying all the costs as usual, just like the U.N. and, and NATO and everything else. Uh, but the, wouldn't it be something if by 20, by 2022 or 2023, we're, we're in the middle of an ice age and all these people who signed this agreement would look ridiculous when that happens, you know, so it's not that far away. And this coming winter could be, could be brutal. I mean, you, you know, Ed and I, a few weeks ago, right at the bottom of the oil, we're talking about a rally coming and, and we've had a, Tremendous rally up to the 47 level, which we just above 47 over the last uh, yesterday, which we sold and went back short. We're down about, um, uh, jeepers, we're down uh, nearly two dollars. I'd say you're probably on the same trade. Um, um, for, for the- yeah, you know, I I was surprised to see uh, when I sat down to look at the charts last night. Uh, it's quite a move for a holiday, a holiday weekend. Yeah. Where did this thing start well, climbing? It started climbing on the third. Well, now you. Well, some something knocked it on the head this morning, and the natural gas is getting clobbered as well. So all, all of the energy sector is is falling. Well, um, we get in, the, we get inventory numbers on crude tomorrow, and then uh, natural gas on Friday. Yeah, you know what? I I think. Uh, I think that the, the, we might get a surprise on the inventory. In other words, you know, we've had a bit of a setback here, but I'd be ready to get back long because I think the, the equation is changing. And actually, there was a very bullish, you know, in support of what we've been saying, which is that, uh, you know, it's not inconceivable that the price of oil could be back over 100 by 2020. Somebody came out with an article this weekend, very interesting I'm saying that, you know, the lack of investment in new production is going to hit hard in the next couple of years. And that combined with world growth and increasing use of oil is probably going to create another short squeeze, which is what we've been saying. You know, we've been saying this is like the 70s. We had the first run up in oil and gold you know, in uh, 2008 and again in, in 2012 in the oil. And uh, alongside it with the gold hitting 1900 or silver hitting 50 bucks, uh, we've had this pullback, and now we're on the you know the next blow off is coming, and I think it's going to be a massive blow off because all the money that's being poured into the economies around the world is is going to be manifested in some sort of hyperinflation or serious inflation. Uh, not necessarily right away, but I would say in the early 20s, uh, the, the, that's that's when everything's going to come come uh, come through. Um, uh, but notwithstanding, I, I wouldn't rule out, uh, in spite of the action in the last couple of days, I wouldn't rule out a, 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 the price of gold rising quite sharply later this quarter and and going into the end of the year. I, I think it's quite. Uh, quite realistic and actually the platinum is sort of making a triple bottom here now triple bottoms aren't very good uh, technically because they usually break down so there's a possibility we could get one more low in platinum and then that might be it and then and then we're off to the races after that um, but uh, so you know I would say any sort of 30 40 50 dollar rally in gold from here would would probably mean the bottom is in and really in, in a big way for the metals. So uh, in spite of uh, the, the pullback metals, the, you know, stocks like Royal Gold and GOLD are not really pulling back that much. I mean, if you look at the long-term chart on these, they look very good. And Newmont um, has acted pretty well today as well. And the last time we took off uh, in 2016, in February 2016, Newmont led the way higher, so I would keep that in mind. Uh, if you start to see Newmont breaking over 33 bucks a share, I think it could signal that you know the lows are close to being in. 
on the metals. <clears throat> um, on the uh, on the Nasdaq, I, I think we mentioned this last week that we were uh, sort of making a three wave pullback correction that's probably several weeks to a month long from that big hit that we took in the Nasdaq a few weeks ago. That was the first hit, then we had the rally, and then we had the second hit going into the July holiday. And as we said last week, you know, expect a big rally, you know, right up to July the 4th. Um, and uh, it has come in right on cue. And we also made a new all-time high on Friday in the transports as well as the Dow. And that's a really bullish uh, development. Uh, generally, when the transports start making new highs, it's going to be a long time before uh, we, we really go into some sort of a serious bear market. Um, also, the mid-caps need to be kept an eye on because they're actually holding up quite well. Not so well today, but if they start breaking out to new all-time highs, that would be a kind of a trifecta. And especially if it was joined by the NASDAQ and the S&P, I mean, if we have these five major indices all hitting new highs, it's, it's going to be incredibly bullish. And I, I think that's probably going to happen in this run that's just started today because, if, you know, it, it, the fangs are back, back on now. Uh, they they and they look like they've had a three-wave pullback pretty much across the board there. The semiconductors are picking up again, actually acting very well today. And the and the pharmaceutical stocks are also acting very well. So we you know we've got a a pretty much across the board rally rebound just starting in stocks uh, right now, and I think it's going to be very bullish. Um, in, in the next couple of weeks are going to be spectacular. And they usually are around a G20 meeting, you know, in, in, even though it might be, look, there might be a pullback, and I, I would use any pullbacks to buy it by for the next few days um, to get set for this rally. So, and and it came in, um, you know, right, right on cue this morning, around 7, 7.30 or so, the NASDAQ took off. We had a buy. We had a buy stop in there at 5605, I think, and uh, but it just caught it uh, real, real nicely um, uh, after being short. Actually, you know, going down into the into the lows, we didn't quite get the lows. The lows got down to about 80, 55, 83, or somewhere like that. Actually, I think we we bought it at 50, not 55, 95, sold it again, bought the second pullback. So we we did quite well on that on that front um, this morning. Uh, the grains are kind of just uh, marking time after this explosive rally we had last week. Um, the wheat actually hit uh, 572 this morning, and it's come back um, a, a little bit. But I think it's the, these grains are, are probably going to go higher because they're you know when you get a when you get a kind of an eruption like this, it doesn't happen by accident. There's really something fundamental starting to impact the market, which is again what we've been talking about to be ready for in fact uh, the, i think it was the day we hit 509 uh, sorry, sorry 909 on the beans i said quote you know there's a really powerful bottom forming on these beans here and this is a pretty good place to go long or on any or in any kind of a upside breakout so it, i certainly i think uh, you and i both called it right on and i'm, I'm sure you called it on your on your, uh, this service well. this thing gapped higher on the open last night. Um, uh, no, that was on the second that it gapped higher. Well, but then it, then right, again it right. gapped higher. Sunday again. night. Sunday night. Yeah. 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 We, had a, we had a gap high open on July second, and then a gap high open on July fifth. Uh, basically, today's session. Which didn't open until 9:30. It didn't open last night. Okay. So that thing gapped all the way up to. What did it open at? It opened at 9:90 and a half. Yeah. And we were looking to be buyers at 9:85, but yeah, it just jumped right over us. Because the, the previous close was down 
at 980.75. Yeah. And so we want to get long at 985. Uh, just the, jumped the, right over. Yeah, the, the orange juice uh, jumped back up as well, and the coffee, for that matter. Uh, the, uh, we, the orange juice pulled back right down to about 131 or so. I think we put a buy stop in at 132 and uh, hit 100. And we sold it at 139.70 this morning. Right now it's at 139. I'd probably rebuy buy it uh, on any pullback um, or on the next breakout because uh, I'd say after this second rebound, it's a fairly good sign that the uh, the, the the orange juice might actually go higher, and it might be affected by, you know, some of this heat, possibly. And the, you know, the whole orange crop recently hasn't been that great. Uh, they, they, they've had a lot of problems with it, and you know, with disease and things. Uh, and they've, they've even had problems in Brazil. So, um, and that's something to keep in mind on the coffee here, especially with the, you know, possibility of a cold colder than an expected winter hitting South America or right now uh, I think you you know want to be try to be long coffee on a dip just in case uh, you know one of these the next tomorrow morning you wake up and coffee's lock limit up it's happened before and they, this could be the year it's going to happen again um, so I would definitely be and, and remember when we were saying that, it, you know, back at 115, that there didn't seem to be a whole lot of risk in buying coffee at 115 and a half or 116. And evidently that's the case because we we're, were around 130 this morning. So it's had a spectacular rally. And I'd say, you know, given the potential for a frost and, and that, the, the lows are probably in on the coffee. Um, Although we, you know, we might get a we might get a retest later on in the year if we don't get a frost, but um, right now the coffee is actually actually acting uh, pretty well, and it, it, I think it hit a nominal new high this morning, so that's quite a good sign. I, I would say if we if we get above 131, uh, we might be we might be on our way back up to 135 or even 140. Hmm. So what look you, at this what Nasdaq. Do think, it's what, actually getting. What do you What do you think is driving? Getting, uh, well, here let me. I'll pull up a Nasdaq chart. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's up sixty five now. It's really uh, really going gangbusters, <clears throat> and and leading the way uh, as well, which is important. And Amazon and Google, uh, we we actually put buys on all these right down near the lows. Uh, both uh, both late uh, Monday and or Monday just before the close and and also this morning, um, and uh, now Celgene and Gild and Clovis. Remember, we're very bullish on Clovis, looking for a, a hundred plus a target on that, maybe a hundred, hundred and ten for Clovis uh, uh, if it gets the momentum going, and also. <clears throat> intercept. So we we put buys on intercept and a, AGIO and IONS, all, all these favorite uh, stocks that we've been following. That pulled back. Uh, for, we sold them at up 129 or so on the intercept. Pulled back to about 121, and it's starting to pick up again now. And I think these stocks are, you know, the intercept in particular. Uh, has the potential to go up, you know, quite dramatically if we get a really big run here in the in the market. And um, the 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 uh, the, the uh, fundamental news is likely to come out. I'm I'm pretty sure that the second quarter is going to be a surprise on the GDP now, uh, which could help the market as well. And also, the next big thing is this employment report coming out uh, on Friday. Um, that, uh, if that's any kind of an upside surprise, that that, that could help the market a lot too. Now and, we get the um, ADP numbers tomorrow, correct? Right, right. And and you know the thing is, you know, look, it's this is what makes this so hard is you know they were beating they were beating the hell out of the market. 
um, they, were, they were they were beating the hell out of the market uh, uh, right into right into last night, you know, <laughs> in the middle of the night. <coughs> oh, excuse me, <clears throat> and um, and now look at it, you know, it's off to the races. And and the point is, when you get these liftoffs like this, they're very hard to catch because, you know, for the very reason, the next thing we're going to look for is the ADP tomorrow morning. If that comes out bullish, that's going to help the market. Then the next thing is we've got the employment on Friday. And if that's good, you know, then this whole next week could be a huge week, which is kind of what we're expecting. <clears throat> now we've and, got and, the and, Fed minutes good. this afternoon. Yeah, that's well, that's, that's the one thing that, you know, uh, that's going to be interesting because that, you know, that could cause a market. I mean, we could be up 100 on the NASDAQ before the day's out. And, uh, but just knowing that what that usually does, because they, some way or another, going to kind of make it positive for the stocks <coughs> and economy. It may be, it may be negative for the metals, but it might be positive for the metals. So you have to be ready for that too, because it's, it's almost unpredictable uh, with that thing. Sometimes it, it's very bullish for the metals. It has been a couple of times. Um, it might be the opposite today just because we're in a downtrend. Do you think the Fed's going to raise rates again before the end of the year? Uh, you know, I, I, well, given the fact that the bonds have cracked now, uh, they've got more reason to be raising rates uh, be, because, especially if the, if the, if the, if bonds go down to 145, which I think could actually happen here in the next week or so. <clears throat> I mean, imagine if, if if we get a surprise unemployment report and it you know, comes in at 300,000 or something, and maybe the unemployment rate goes down to 4% or 4.2 or 4.1, that could put the bonds down, limit down, you know? I mean, it could go limit down. Uh, we haven't had a limit move for a long time. So, yeah, how, uh, far, how far can bonds move before they get mm, get lots of limit down or up? Three, three point, three point, three, three points. points. Three points. Okay. Yeah. So that's three thousand dollars per contract. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, the the what what's got me kind of worked up about these bonds is the fact that they broke, the fact that they broke, uh, you know, as rapidly as they did. Uh, and, and and not getting much, you know, every time they rally, they tend to get knocked down. Um, so, you know, if we break the 153 now, start heading for 150, uh, that will be, you know, that actually might be very bullish for the markets. You know, right, the, the, the initial shock of the bonds getting getting hit actually hurt uh, the, you know, the, the, the Dow and, and hurt the S&P and the mid-cap. Um, and the Nasdaq as well, but now you know what 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 when we get to a point where maybe the dollar starts tanking again, and the bonds start really tanking, uh, and then the market says you know wow the economy is much stronger than expected. That's when you get the accelerated move to the upside, and I think we're kind of getting geared up for that right now. And that, that could be what really puts the market on afterburners here for the next month or two in a kind of a blow-off top. Hmm. And, and, and obviously, if we hit, I mean, i got to tell you, if we start hitting multiple all-time highs and four or five, or even, you know, five indices and, and a whole bunch of ETFs and things, uh, and, and specialist sectors like the semiconductors, I mean, it would it, be very, very bullish because... When you get this synchronized, and including including the global market, you know the, the, we've never been in a situation like this in our lifetime, in my lifetime, uh, where where the market where the market is going synchronized. We're in a global bull market of monumental proportions, where you know the Indian market's going through the roof, the the global market's going, the Chinese market's rallying strongly, the British market, the European markets. I mean, everything, almost every market around the world is making new highs, uh, not necessarily all-time highs, but they're making new long-term highs uh, simultaneously, and this is a very, very powerful thing that's happening. It's never happened before. 
and, and along with that, the, the advanced decline line is incredibly bullish. It's, this is uh, this has absolutely never happened before. It never, ever, ever happened like this in the entire history of the world. This is something really rare and unique. And by the way, remember what I said, <clears throat> you know, from October 85 to uh, sort of uh, November 86 uh, was basically a period very similar to what we're in right now where the market was anticipating tax cuts. We were only up about 20%. The market rose 38% from from October 85 to, to uh, late 86. Mm -hmm. When they announced the tax cuts, when, listen to carefully, when they announced the tax cuts, the market went up another 50%. So, you know, everybody's sort of saying, it's the stock, this market's too high, the drop is in and all that. It's could be a long way from, I mean, this market could keep going for, it may not even, look, we thought we might have a pullback in April. It never came. We had a very mild pullback in, in April, May. Uh, and, uh, you know, just to bet on a pullback in July or August isn't, isn't necessarily, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll get some sort of a pullback. But whether we'll get a kind of a serious pullback remains to be seen. And unless something really bad happens, <clears throat> that, that may not actually happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen from 85 to 86. Uh, for, from late 85 through all of 86, the market was incredibly strong the whole time. Rallied right into the tax cuts. So, you know, given when, those tax when, cuts... When do you think, you know, there's been so much talk about these tax cuts, when do you think they're... It, well, it, it I, appears I, I, that, that, that Trump of, gets thwarted every at, at everything he attempts to do. I, I just... It's, yeah, it, it's puzzling. It's puzzling that... Uh, it's puzzling that, uh, you know... That it's taking so long to tell you the truth, but <clears throat> don't forget the other reason why we might be rallying here is because I think behind the scenes uh, the, the the Republicans could come out here with a with a with a pass on the on the health care uh, any any minute. So, and if I think if the health care bill gets passed, that's a shoe in for the for the uh, for the tax cuts because. The market's going to say, well, you know, if they if they pass the very difficult health care bill, you know, the tax cuts are kind of a walk in the park because pretty much everybody wants them, you know. <laughs> so uh, I can't imagine it, who wouldn't. The first, maybe Warren Buffett. I don't know. Right. Well, well, yeah, but but the point is that <clears throat> they're, they're 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 coming and um, <clears throat> they they are, you know, however they're going to look the the general theme of the tax cuts is already pretty well known, but as they become more better known and they apply to the market, you know, they, they, this, they, you just can't underestimate where this market's going. And the, you know, the world has been in a kind of a slump for a long, long time. I mean, Europe's been in a mega, in a 10-year slump. It's really been for a rough time. They've had incredibly high unemployment very high in Spain, up to 20, 20, 25 percent, 27 percent. It's down to about 15 or 17 now, which is a lot better. Um, you know, they've had real problems in Europe, uh, a lot of problems in China, and, 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 you know, we've really, and, you know, since 2000, as, you know, for the whole of the last decade, the S&P didn't go anywhere. So, you know, the fact that we're breaking out now and really starting to move higher is kind of a normal, you know, thing. And especially after a big, long base, this is what happened uh, in the 70s. You know, right after the 70s, <clears throat> the market uh, went on a tremendous tear, tear and uh, was ultimately up, uh, well, we were up 370% uh, or 389% in, in the 80s. And then, you know, people thought, just, just like now, you know, we've been sort of going up eight years fairly slowly. And... I've, I've used this, I've talked about this before. You know, the, Robert Farrell, who was a chief uh, strategist at Merrill Lynch, you know, right at the 1990, they asked him, you know, what sort of a decade he saw ahead. He said a boring decade of anemic growth. Anemic he couldn't growth, have been more oh, yeah. wrong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, 
all of a sudden we have the roaring 90s and, and we're making millionaires faster than you can imagine and, 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 uh, and all these internet things started and everything else. So I think we're in a period very similar to, to the, uh, you know, we're in the mobile age now. We're in the uh, innovative age, you know, flying cars and, and uh, autom- automated driving and all kinds of stuff and hypersonic transport. All these are really major themes that are going to drive and the space, you know, space rates 2.0. All of these things are going to drive the economies of all countries higher, uh, you know, because even some of these smaller countries, you know, like somebody's come up with a flying car that was invented in in Poland or somewhere like that. You know, really, really, really credible looking uh, flying car. So, you know, the, there's innovation coming from all around the world now and there's a tremendous amount of innovation coming out of China and, and Israel and, and other places like that. So, <clears throat> and, and, and Russia as well. So, uh, the... Uh, the science and technology you know, that comes out of Israel proportionate to the number of people there has always been just off the charts. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, but when you look at, even even in the last 10 years, I mean, the, 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 the way the Internet has become a mainstream to education, <laughs> you know, all over the world, even, you know, even to the far, far reaches of Africa, places, you know, the, the, the change that's coming to the whole world and the, the enormous amount of information that can be added and education that can be added. Sounds like we might be losing you there. Listen, I better, I better knock it off and, and say, say farewell till tomorrow, but I look forward to coming on tomorrow. Thanks again oh, for the okay. invite. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. All right, guys, and that's where we're going to leave it on this first post-holiday back. Look at this in queue, up 69 points. Real quick, real quick rundown of the markets before we scoot. All right, you ready? The Dow's up two and a half points. NASDAQ is up 43 the S&P 500 is up almost 4 the Russell 2000 is down 8 and a half don't forget 2 p.m. Fed minutes volatility no volatility you never know until it happens thanks so much for tuning in today whoever you are wherever you are may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.